It is Monday afternoon, July 15, 1991. Joe Gilovich will never see his Christine, or his Jackson, or his Michaela, ever again. The mountain is about to swallow the sun. Joe Gilovich, 42 years, a well-nourished male, handsome to women who like scruffy men, the only male of eight children, angry, loved and loving, hated and hating, confused and confusing, Private Joe Gilovich, former National Serviceman number 6709497, Bravo Company, 7th Battalion, Royal Australian Regiment, Vietnam Veteran. We'll never again see the sun dip below the mountain. Somehow, he seems to know it. The death has given him notice. From about one inch below Joe Gilovich's left nipple, a 130 gram hollow point 7.62 millimeter projectile, fired from a police sniper's Heckler and Koch PSG-1, entered Joe Gilovich's body, rupturing his heart, his lungs, liver and diaphragm, and dispatched his soul to eternity. The echo from that single shot on Tuesday morning, July 16, 1991, at Pilverata, raced to another time and another place, to a dreadful place at a dreadful time, to Auschwitz and the concentration camps of Germany and Poland, to 1939, to a time of two families in the clutches of the Holocaust, to a time of desperate survival. That bullet was to link the Gilovich family and the Hansevich family. It was to rekindle notions of justice and survival and a belief in the importance of human individuality. It was to set the family on a crusade to overturn an inquest decision that their son, brother and husband's death was a justifiable homicide. It was to set the Hansevich family on a crusade to clear the name of an honest man. At time of writing this prelude, the crusades remain unfulfilled, but very much alive. Ooh.